Hey guys, <laughs> welcome back to the Jeremy Com channel. We're here with the RTD. Uh, season two, episode four. Um, we're kind of coming to you kind of crazy on this one. Uh, not planned. It hasn't been completely, the questions haven't been written out. We had a plan for what was going to be, uh, episode four and that kind of fell through. We already filmed three and five though. So before we could post five, we decided to go ahead and film a four and this four. It's just going to be kind of crazy, like I said. Um, potentially rotating in panel members, and the questions are coming from you all. What are those questions? They're the questions that I um, had a contest for, and we're just going to literally pull all the questions from there. Uh, normally on an RTD, uh, we usually give the questions out to the panel members about a day in advance just to kind of review real quick, get a sense of what what the uh, overall episode is going to be about. Uh, this one's going to be live and kind of crazy, so uh, kind of expect whatever. Let me go ahead and show you my cast. Right now we've got The Clash 24. He's a lively one. The next one is John from War Game Painting. Yes. Agreed. <laughs> and we're bringing on for the first time Zertz. First question from Mountain Daddy 3. Um, it, he asks, as most double de decade 40K gamers like myself have both large investments and comfort zones in the GW system, what do you think are the two strongest reasons, arguments, that War Machine has what it takes to become the new primary in gaming? How does it improve the experience? And for that, we're going to go ahead and start with the Clash 24. Remember, he's asking for two answers here. You're on. Okay. Um, definitely uh, the rules. Um, the rules are less complicated and um, takes less to explain. That being said, you can you can you can have a lot more fun in double dose the exact amount of time that you would have in one game of uh, Warhammer. John from War Game Game, let's get your answer, my man. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I had such a good one before. It was so good that all three of these guys were just like, wow, have my love children. And now I forgot what it was. So, I mean, I, I, I'm i kind of disappointed in myself. But um, I feel it was like I the lines it. Of, it was easy to pick up. And, you know, you, you don't have to feel intimidated because it's only like four models on the table. When you first start, it's 50 bucks. You go to town. You can learn while you're playing and not have to really read up. Before you start, if you know somebody who actually knows how to play, you can literally just sit down and start playing. Uh, the guy in back with me, he doesn't know it yet, but he's going to be playing with me tomorrow. He doesn't know anything about it. All right, Zertz, you're up. Have my love children. Yeah, you can still have my love kids. Please do. All right. Uh, okay, so I'll keep it short here because I won't get the tap down on me. But uh, number one, I don't play War Machine, <laughs> but I really want to. And here's why. Uh, like John said, a few models, so it's uh, easy to get into and not intimidating. And number two, like, if you've been in this game forever, you're going to have tons of armies, and let's face it, you're going to buy stuff anyways. So you may as well try something new and, you know, skip out the 40k fade and just have two games just on the go, and you never know, I might like it. So I can pick it up. You should, too. All right. Fantastic answer, and I'm going to go ahead and jump in here at this point. Um, honestly, consider War Machine like the Wii. Uh, it's going to in completely increase the number of people getting into tabletop wargaming strategy stuff because it's lower cost, easier to pick up the rules, and uh, quite honestly, I don't need to spend months and years painting an army that will never be fully painted. Uh, and those are the reasons. Uh, further discussion. I had a really funny joke about the Wii, but then I forgot it, so I'm just, I'm off my game tonight. I don't even it like the Wii, so but okay. Perfect. <laughs> No, 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 no. You don't oh, have to man. like the Wii to, real, to to recognize, and I don't know why this is not working. There we go. You do not have to like the Wii to recognize that the Wii has brought so many more people into, into console gaming that um, there is more emphasis being put on to games and a whole lot more love in the dollar sense being brought to the console market. <laughs> All right. No, dude, you're 100 right. I think that has a good analogy. But especially if you bring in a new player, what's going to be more likely to get a yes out of someone who's oh, I don't know? 
uh, playing a game with, you know, four versus four beautifully painted models or a horde of guys and you're trying to persuade, you know, maybe it's uh, the gamer girl or maybe it's just your friend who has nothing to do with the games whatsoever and you know they love it, but you got that sort of intimidation factor there, right? Yeah. So it's like it's like playing Risk. Yeah, that's like true. you can just open up the box and just play. It's the same with War Machine. You can literally just open up the box and play. And so, the other I mean, good thing like, is that you yourself can go ahead and purchase multiple armies and just get people in the game, as opposed to in 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 some of the larger scale games where you are putting together skill. lots of miniatures and paying out the wazoo for it. That ain't happening. You will bust your bank if you try to buy multiple armies for 40k. And make your and friends then, play that. Oh my god! And then what you do is you buy multiple armies, and you turn it around, and you sell it back to your friends for like twice retail. It's right. like yeah. Your friends <laughs> so you go buy two more boxes, and then you just do this entire thing, and soon everybody within a fifty mile radius of you is playing this game. I mean, that's what I would do. I did Absolutely. it actually back in the forties. <laughs> All right, and the next question comes from Rock Co. I'm hoping I'm saying this right. What rule do you think it should be added to the Warhammer 40K universe to improve the realism, etc., of the game? Maybe in 6th edition. His example is that he thinks it should be harder to hit your opponent when the shooting distance is farther away. Uh, and for this, we're going to go ahead and start with John from War Game Painting. Uh, I definitely have to agree with his example. I think that would, in and of itself, improve 40K exponentially and just make it more enjoyable to play. But, um, And I don't want to steal either of those two guys because we started on that side last time. So I'm just going to go ahead and agree with them. I'm going to say that would be my one that I think would honestly <laughs> make the game way agree better. What we say. So Man. I'm just going to be like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just hand it over to those guys so they don't get angry and come after me. Well, I'm going to say I'm then sports. free tacos with your box set. <laughs> okay, well, we'll stop by back to you, John, when, uh, in, in case you got something else when we open the floor. Zerk. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll go ahead and echo mine, but uh, this time maybe it'll come out a little smoother here. All right, cover and armor really should be the same thing. If your armor piercing, whatever, melt a gun, shoots through, you know, a land raider, obviously you can pretty much go through that bush over there. So maybe make cover a bonus to your armor saves so it's a little more realistic, as the uh, question was there. Ah, right. See, that did come out a lot more clear. I understood that one. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Scott. Uh, sorry, the class 24, make it happen. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to say I, I don't like the minus modifier to your range thing. It just makes more rules a little bit more complicated. That being said, the answer to my question would be the same way they did the Lord of the Rings for the Games Workshop. I'm going to do the same answer, but a little faster and a little smoother. Um, the game sequences go... Um, you move, I move, you shoot, I shoot, you know, et cetera, et cetera. That way the time lapse is kind of faster and kind of like chess. You kind of play back and forth instead of taking whole droves of turns to stand there and go, hmm, should I move here? Okay, let's see, who's going to shoot? We'll start from over here. See, and it kind of takes a little bit longer. So I think making the time lapse and turns a little more smoother will make the game a little bit more enjoyable. All right. Um, if, if I was going to be nitpicky right now, the first thing I would say is that marker lights can be blocked by cover. Uh, no, but really the, uh, the, uh, if, if I had to give how? one rule, Why is it uh, that issue? Would help, uh, <laughs> if I had to give one rule that, uh, I think would add to the realism, which I really don't think, uh, 40K should actually focus on that, um, because I don't really know many, uh, space marines dropping in the drop pods in today's day and age. But um, if I had to pick one, I think. one rule, I would probably say something to the effect <laughs> of uh, if you are in a vehicle, your vehicle should probably be able to go a little bit faster than a dude running alongside of it. Granny, you have to roll six, but I just, I kind of think that. Anyways, guys, oh, open discussion. I've John. I've got hold one. On, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is acting stupid again. It's it's not I, right now. It's just focused on me. I'm trying to get it where everyone's in the picture, ah. and it's not it's not responding. You could be the poster boy for 
this RTD. I feel like it was somebody's idea, but, you know, you could take credit for it. Oh, thanks. Thanks, John. I appreciate that. What are you doing over there? Shut up, Fox. Oh, there we go. Finally, it's because Uvu was trying to update while we were filming. Thanks, Uvu. <laughs> All right, open the open the floor for uh, the more realistic game. John, go ahead, throw that throw that answer out there. Uh, I want to throw it out there. No more useless units. Honestly, I'm done. I mean, oh, okay. You you give me pyovores in my new Tyranid Codex. Thanks. Am I ever going to use them? No. Why is that realistic in any way? Why would you ever ever build or buy something? or put something into a physical army that you would never, ever use. Just it's sitting in the background somewhere? No. Uh-uh. Like, like whirlwinds? Why? It's in a garage somewhere. <laughs> Not being used. It should be the same way. Put it in fluff. Put it in fluff all you want. Say it's in the garage. Say it's in the shop. Something like that. It should not be in the actual book. There is no reason for it. Let me jump in here real quick. And, John, I'm actually going to disagree with you. I think... All armies should be forced to take a whole bunch of garbage units because in any particular realistic army battle situation, that's what you're going to see on the battlefield anyways. You're going to see a drove of people who are much less powerful than the people sitting on top. Yeah, but yeah. the people on either side would not be like, hey, look, I've got a stick or a pitchfork. I'm going to take the stick. Okay, It's the same thing. You know, if you're dirt poor, it's stick or pitchfork. Bigger stick or smaller stick? Taking the bigger stick. I mean, gotcha. Anyways, we're going to jump over to question number three. Um, and this is from, who is this from? Saroga. How do you guys feel that the new Space Wolves, or I, this is kind of worded kind of strange, so I'm going to change it a little bit on you. Do you feel that the new Space Wolves and Blood Angel Codices make the Vanilla Space Marine Codex obsolete? And Zertz, uh, oh my God, <laughs> you're up first. We're only we're only responding to the questions we're getting. Uh, no, dude, have you read your Space Marines Codex? Yeah, you can have one poor, you know, terrible army choice out of there, but. Blood Angels plays differently than Black Town players, plays differently than Space Marines. You have different characters in there. You have competitive stuff in there. Vulcan's in the Space Marine Codex. I mean, no, there's there's multiple options. It depends on what you want to play. Obviously, if you want to play an all-assault army, you'll play Blood Angels. So don't look for that in the Space Marines Codex. But just read all the codexes and pick the one you want. All right. The Clash 24, you're up. So I think I'm agreeing with them, kind of. Um, I... I kind of think it is a little bit obsolete. I, I, when I started, I wanted to do Space Marines. I wanted to do Blood Angels. Um, so the GW staff was like, here, you need this codex with this codex. So I got this codex with that codex being the Space Marine codex and the Blood Angels codex. I flipped through the Space Marine codex and I was like, okay, I don't need that because I flipped through the Blood Angels one and I was like, well, everything I need is here. So, you know, put just, like, the stats for your weapons in this codex and the other codexes, and you really don't need the... I mean, make a small ultramarine one, maybe. So, John, obsolete. tell us what your thoughts are. I feel like we've kind of strayed a little bit oh. from the question, but... So, not only is just the Space Marine Codex obsolete with the Space Wolves and the Blood Angels, but <laughs> the Chaos... Space Marines Codex is obsolete, and anything else that doesn't have a three-up armor safe is obsolete. So, if you want to be competitive, if you want to win games, if you want to have fun, because you're not getting just kicked in the ribs while you're on the ground, Blood Angels or Space Wolves. That's the short answer of it. Long answer of it is, it's obsolete. <laughs> okay, I'm going to jump in here real quickly. Um, I'm actually going to tell you that the Space Marines Codex made the Space Marine Codex obsolete. Why? Because there's only really two good choices, and that's Strike or Vulcan, and every other kind of army combination there kind of is... Uh, anyways, but with the introduction of the Blood Raven or Blood Angels and the Space Wolves, uh, yeah, what John said... Uh, Unbelievably broken, and uh, they, they they make the Space Marines, in, in Smurfs' words, look like babies. Uh, continued discussion. 
All right, continue what? discussion. Codex what? 2011? What? <laughs> Is that Codex of Blood Ravens coming out in 2011, a little spoiler drop there, or what? Uh, I'm still not what you're saying, Serge. So I'm going to jump over to the Class 24. Any additional comments? Um, no, I just think it's kind of obsolete. You just want to get a new Codex. It's just kind of like, you, you, like he was saying, John was saying, competitive. Get get something that's good. <laughs> if you want something that's good, get good. For, for, exactly. For you know a competition, get something good. Yeah, I, I, I got to put the Space Marine Codex on the shelf. I have to give credit to Zerts. I do kind of agree that there there are still good Space Marines lists available to you in in the Space Marine Codex. But the problem so is that like the other the term two books obsolete might be a little bit strong, but it's pretty close. John, well, well yeah. the, the problem with the Space Marines Codex, and with the Chaos Space Marines Codex, too, is that the Blood Angels and Space Wolves do their job better. I mean, you want to go close combat army for... I don't know much about Space Marines, so I'm going to just use the Chaos Space Marines book as reference. If you want to go close combat, you use Korn's Zerkers. I mean, straightforward. Space Wolves do it way, way, way better, and you get the range that Chaos doesn't. Right. You want to do a shooty army, or a really melt-a-spam, or a drop-heavy army... And from Space Marines, anyway, Blood Angels does it way, 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 way better and way, 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 way cheaper with way, 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 way better special rules. It makes it to the point where you use Space Marines as more of a, like, a, you know, like, hey, I don't want to be a, a complete douchebag. I'm going to play <laughs> Space Marines. It's kind of like, you know... <laughs> It's like, hey, you see an Ultramarines player, it used to be instant hate for me, anyway, if I saw an Ultramarines player, because I'm just like, you fanboy, get a real army. Now it's just like, thank you. Thank you for not <laughs> playing a broken army. Thank you. If you're being so, Codex, I mean, uh, Space Wolves, immediate minus 10 to your tournament score, or what? Uh, I, no, I, I won't do that to a person. I really won't. But, you know, it'll just be, I hate you the entire game. It'll just be... All right. Well, it's kind of like you went with Tal. It's a real win, right? Of, of, um, this is concluding part one of episode four of season two. We're going to come back with part two in two and two, or whatever that means. <laughs>